Hi guys, it's Miss M. And today we are going to be talking about the elements of poetry, what poetry can have, and a lot of different other things because as you know, this week we are revealing our dramas, poetries, and our proses. So today we are gonna be talking about poetry, as you can see. And I wanna give you a small warning. There's gonna be a lot of information that I'm gonna be talking about with you. So please stop the video at any time that you need to to take down these notes because like I said, this is a double-sided whiteboard as some of you know and I have written on both sides. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things because poetry has a lot going on with it. Not every piece of poetry is the same or follows the same rules. So we gotta talk about everything to cover all our bases. So, as you can see, it says poetry creates pictures or imagery from words. It describes movements and or expresses feelings. So poetry is a great way for our poets, people who write poetry, to create a picture in their readers' minds about what's happening, to kind of make connections with the reader. Because, you know, if they're expressing some type of feeling, the reader could be really understanding and have experiences of those types of feelings. It can describe movement and all these different things. And that's why poetry is pretty common and one of the most common ways of people of out of the three dramas poetries and plays poetry is used a lot as expression um poems are a form of entertainment on expression because poetry can entertain you know dr seuss you guys love dr seuss his poetry is very strictly for entertainment all this wacky silly words the animals all of that is for strictly entertainment purposes and a lot of deeper more serious poetry is used for expression. Emily Dickinson, Robert Frost, um, even our poem at Casey at the Bat, it did give some sort of expression. Those types of authors, those poets, um, are really good at conveying, which means expressing um, different feelings for the reader to know and to understand exactly how the poet was feeling while writing this piece of poetry. And it's also a way for the readers to be like, oh, I kind of experienced something or t be taken back by the writing. So poems can include lines, which are just exactly as it sounds, lines are just one line of writing. Verses, which is a group of which each line is called. So if I had seven lines going across, each line would be called a verse. Now each line I can clump together and call a stanza. It's a group of lines. Usually poems have theme, as you guys know from last week, theme is the message that the author wants to convey to us, wants us to know, wants us to figure out and discover. And poetry usually has mood or tone, which is the feeling of the author's words, that the, choice, the word choices that they gave, that they picked to use in their poem. So instead of using our simple words like we talked about, that we know about, they picked a stronger word that kind of makes their poem another level. It's really all about precise word choice in poetry and it all depends on how the poet wants to use that word choice. All right, so now I'm gonna go on because poetry has a lot going on with it. As you can see, poetry can also include the following. Now, like I said, not all poetry has all of this stuff or follows everything as you're seeing here, but a lot of poetry, a lot of poets, use a lot of these things. They have a meter, which is the number of syllables in a line. So syllables, you know, are the word, broken up words. You know, some words have three syllables, some have two, okay? And it also helps create the rhythm in the poem because of those syllables, the way that you say and enunciate those lines, you kind of get a little bit of rhythm going on and you can feel it and you can hear it and you can see it as you're reading. Well, not see it, but you can definitely hear it. Rhyme is the repetition of the same or similar sounds, and these are usually stressed at the end of the line. So this is your one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Dr. Seuss is really good at rhyme, rhymes and rhyming because he, his poetry usually is stressed at the end. Fat, cat, hat, rat, here or there, would you could you in a box, would you could you with a mouse, those types, fox, box, all those things, you know, Miss M's not really, can't really remember all Dr. Seuss's greatness. Um, then we have rhythm, which is the pattern of beats or stresses in the poem. 
So, you know, everything seems like it's following this type of movement, and it's kind of is. So it could follow a, those little bumps I'm doing right now, this little tapping, that's kind of like the beats. So when you see the poem, when you read the poem to yourself, when you say it out loud, you kind of get some rhythms and beats patterns going on. And then you have this thing called rhyme scheme, and we didn't really go into it that much in the classroom, so I'm gonna really stress the importance of it now. Rhyme scheme is the rhyming pattern that is created at the end of the lines of the poem or the poetry in general. So Dr. Seuss is really good at using rhyme scheme. And an example I have here is Mary had a little lamb, a little nursery rhyme for all of you. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece as white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. This has an A, B, C, B pattern because if I look at the end of my lines, lamb doesn't have any rhyming friends. Snow and go rhyme, so those two are together, so that's why they call it B, because it all the rhyme scheme goes in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it goes by the alphabet. So each line can get its own unique letter. Lamb starts it off, so there's A, but there's no other friend that rhymes with lamb, so there's no other A rhyme scheme. Snow and go rhyme together, and they get the rhyme scheme of B, because they both rhyme. Went is like lamb, has nobody to rhyme with, so he gets his own line, okay? Now there is A, B, B, A patterns, there's A, A, B, A patterns, there's a bunch of different patterns. This is A, B, C is kind of the most common, and also A, B, A, B is very common. If it's an A, B, A, B line, that's kind of like Dr. Seuss. There once was a cat. The cat liked to sit. The cat was also very fat. And the cat liked to knit. So cat and fat are an A pattern because they rhyme together. Sit and knit would be a rhyme scheme of B because they rhyme together. So it would be an A, B type of poem. So it's also important to know, I know it's hard to see down here. It's start, it says if there's no real rhyme scheme, usually that means that the poem is a free first. There is, it's following its own rules. It's not really following any different type, but it's not following any of this rhyme scheme. Most po po um, poems, excuse me, tend to follow a rhyme scheme. If there's no rhyme scheme, if you can't detect a rhyme scheme, meaning that every single line, end of the line has, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it goes, there's nothing that really rhymes with it. It's a free verse poem. And those are usually the fun types of poetry. We did one in the classroom. The Who Am I poem, you guys didn't really rhyme with any of those. So that was like a free verse thing. Now there are different types of poetry, as you know. There's free verse where it has no rhyme scheme, a high Q, which is a five, seven, five syllable type of poetry, an acrostic. Um, there's shape poems where the poem actually makes out a shape or something. Um, there's lyrical poems, there's ballads, there's a whole bunch of different types of poems. Now, a lot of poems, I didn't include this, but I'll talk to you about it now, have a lot of figurative language. As you guys know from like a couple weeks ago, you did a lot of figure, you did a figure of language type of thing with me. You watched the video, you did an activity with it. So they, a lot of poems are using, and poets use figurative language to help create special feelings or effects to take a generic, pretty standard, great poem and just make it something different, something that could leave the reader going, wow, or leaving them speechless because it has all of that. So, you know, our different types of figurative language is alliteration, which is usually the repetition of a consonant sound at the beginning of the word. So... Um, Peter Piper pecked a pickle pepper peppers you know, those tongue twisters are usually miss I'm just tried very hard and failed very hard um, but those tongue twisters are really great alliteration examples Sally sold seashells by the seashore all that s and sh sounds are alliteration our onomatopoeia that are words to use and represent particular sounds like BAM slam crash all of those Imagery, you know, it's what we talked about. It's creating that picture using nice wordage to rep, uh, to make to use senses. The whole point of imagery is that you want the reader to see it, you want them to feel it, you want them to possibly even smell it, taste it, hear it. If you can get a reader to really feel, taste and smell, you're using really great descriptive words. 
and you know personifications when we give human qualities to non-human things so if we're talking about the clouds and how the clouds dance across the sky like a ballet dancer or something like that there's your personification all right so here's an example of a piece of poetry it's not just it's just just something simple for us to understand. This whole thing is a poem. The poem's talking about fog. It's a free verse, so there's no rhyming or rhyme scheme, which we talked about. There's personification, because it says the frog comes on the little cat feet. As we know, personification is giving that in, those human qualities to inhuman, um, non-human objects. Fog can't come on little cat feet. These are all lines right here. This is a stanza. Here's another stanza. <clears throat> Remember, each line is called a group is called a verse. So this is just an example of it. All right. I know it was a lot of information that I threw at you guys, and but it was just a quick little review of exactly what is poetry and how poetry differs from drama from yesterday and for tomorrow's video on how poetry is different from a prose. All right, guys. Until the next video. Bye.